Hey, I've been wanting to make this video for a little while now. Um, I Earlier this year, um, I got a really touching email from one of my former students. And uh, it's just, I wanted to make the video basically on the benefits, if not the ancillary benefits of preparing yourself to take the AMC. And a lot of you I know are very stressed about, you know, you tried for years and years and you never made it. And I want you to understand it's not the end of the world. And it doesn't make you not capable of being a mathematician. Um, many, most people probably who are math majors never qualified for Amy. Uh, it should be something that you see as fun. It's a challenge and it's great if you get it, but it's not a golden ticket. It's, it's going to accentuate your resume for college, if you will, your application and university to apply. But it's not the be all end all of getting into elite universities. And case in point, I'm gonna share with you a student that I taught in person uh, back when I was in California. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the email now. So I blocked out things to protect privacy of the individual. And I, I, I got it here. So this came about, I don't know when it came in, sometime in May or June maybe. Hi, James teacher, not sure if you remember me, but this is so-and-so, one of your AMC students back in the day. I definitely remember this student. I knew who it was the moment I saw the email. I don't tend to forget students, especially ones that I taught in person, but I still remember every single student I taught online as well. I have a pretty good memory. Uh, one of your AMC students back in the days when you used to teach at, and I blotted out the academy. I just thought I'd check in with you before I head to college in the fall. Uh, do I have my pen here somewhere just in case I want to highlight? Um, I am going to put annotate on and this, uh, let's go white. Well, maybe a uh, yellow, uh, pink, where's yellow, yellow. That's red. Yeah. Oh, is that one? That's orange. Is that yellow? There's yellow. Okay. So, uh, I saw that your channel had over 10 K subscribers and I remember when it was just starting out, I launched it while I was teaching this student. Uh, I never ended up qualifying for Amy. And for a lot of you, this is like a death knell. You're like, oh, I never qualified for Amy. So, you know, therefore I can't do math or I'm not capable. I see these kind of posts all the time. It's, it's really utter nonsense, to be honest. And you shouldn't really think that way. So we'll continue on. This student who never qualified for Amy, let's see their results here. Sorry about that. He felt bad. To be honest, he's a good kid. Really great kid. Uh, I, I, I'm so proud of this student. Uh, sorry about that, but I did end up, and these are the ancillary benefits I'm talking about, getting a perfect math score on my PSAT and even on my SAT to score 1550 on it. I've gotten fives on both AP Calc exams and a seven, the highest score on my IB math exam. For college, I'm going to Stanford on a full ride scholarship majoring in math and computer science. So thank you for helping me find my passion for math. Last thing I remember, um, you can, I'll read this too, I guess. When, I, when you brought, bought me the Pass Royale for Clash Royale, I did used to play Clash Royale back then when I had more free time. Uh, and to me, it was a big deal, but you just told me to pay it forward to other people in the future. You're truly a kind person, and I can see your love for teaching math in your videos and work. Wishing you the best of luck in the future. And again, I've crossed out the name. Uh, thank you for the wish of luck if you watch this video in the future. I did get the student's permission to share this email, but I was very touched and moved. Honestly, it brought me to tears to read this. I am so proud of that kid. What an amazing story, right? It's not the Amy qualification that got him in. He got in because he's a great student and he's very smart and he's very capable and he's diligent and he puts forth effort and he got in because of those reasons. He's also a very kind-hearted kid, great family, and they're very supportive of him. And he, you know, he loves his parents and all of those kinds of things that you would want to see in a human, in an individual. And I, I just couldn't be more proud. Uh, what an amazing story. And think about this, Stanford on a full ride and as a math major and computer science, but never qualified for Amy. Is it going to be what determines whether or not you get into MIT or Stanford or other ones? I don't think it does. Does it help? Would it have been a higher chance if he got in? Sure, but that's not the point. The point is, look at all the ancillary benefits that he got just from preparing and trying to qualify. And that brings me to a list of things that I want to show you. Um, I shared this in my Discord server too, and they were all 
equally enamored with it. Um, let's see, can I share again directly to this statement here of things I want to go over? No, this is a list of things I made as far as ancillary benefits. Number one, you're challenging yourself to achieve something. It takes courage. It takes determination, willpower. How many times do you turn down frivolous entertainment items so that you can go study? Maybe while your friends are, you know, playing random phone games and things like that. So it takes willpower and discipline. You become a more creative thinker and you see things that others miss. This is another benefit, right? Doesn't the world need people who look at the problems of today's world and see them in a new light, ways that other people might not think of? It's a huge benefit as well. And I think the AMC specifically wants people who can do that. That's why they evolve the problems every year by adding new wrinkles, because they're not looking for people in society who can solve yesterday's problems. They want people who can solve future problems. And this is why a lot of universities value the test as well. But you're still gaining that skill, even if you don't ever qualify for the AIME. So I said, what company, including possibly your own, uh, doesn't need that, right? And so you might launch your own company in the future. You might work for yourself, but companies are looking for those kinds of people because they change the fortunes of the company and the future as a society. So you fall in love with math. And that's what happened with him. He fell in love, fell in love with math so much that he pursued intensive math at his school and even went to, on to major in mathematics at such a prestigious university as Stanford. So pretty cool there. Your school math becomes a joke, right? You, all, you don't have to think. It's an easy A for the most part. I mean, are there some people, are there outliers to this rule? Yes, it's not locked tight. Maybe you still struggle with some of your school math. There are some really difficult school teachers. I mean, I, but even those, most of the time my comp math students glide through teachers that others consider very difficult like butter. And they might not get 100%, but they're pulling 94s, 95s, 96s, things like that. And they're not having to struggle as hard to get those kinds of grades. And so it's basically easy A's. I don't know any student who gets close to an Amy Qual who's not getting easy A's in their math class. Now, when you get in high school to linear algebra, especially proving something's a vector space and things of that nature, and maybe to multivariable calculus, you have to understand in the US, 13% of all high school students ever even take a calculus class. Think about that. So that's even a single AB calc, that's it, 13%. So those of you taking multivariable by the end of, you're so many light years ahead of your average college student. And granted, I do understand, you probably need to be to have a chance at these institutions that you wanna get into, okay? But you're still gonna have an easy A in AB and BC for the most part, because those things are more pedestrian thought processes. Um, it allows you or lets you focus on other subjects when you're in high school. It lets you get your English score up. It lets you, uh, your science grades and everything else of that nature, physics, whatever else you might take. So when you're doing your homework in high school, I have a lot of students who don't do comp math too, a handful, not a lot, but I've taught many in my life. They're spending one to 1.5 hours on their school math homework assignment and they're not getting everything right and they're not getting an easy A every time. But the students that do comp math and they pursue it, they actually make the effort, they're spending 30 to 45 minutes on their assignment and they're, they're, they're uh, saving time every day. So when you think about it, let's say you invested hundreds, 200 hours of time when you were in middle school, maybe more, 300, 400 hours from sixth through eighth grade preparing for a, comp, a comp, math uh, competition, okay? But when you get to high school, now you're saving 45 minutes a night on your homework every single night. Think about that. It's a huge benefit that we're not considering. Do you know how busy you're going to be in high school? Like if you're in middle school now or you were, you have no idea how much busier you get with all your AP coursework, you know, uh, all of those kinds of things that you have to prepare for. You've banked this time in middle school. You're not losing that time. You didn't lose the time if you don't make any. You gained it in the future. It was an investment in yourself and future time sa savings. So keep that in mind. Um, SAT and ACT, 
I asked in my server how many of them had taken the SAT or ACT and what their scores were. 30 responses came in. The only answers I heard were these two for SAT. And you just saw that student just now had a perfect score on their SAT. Um, so you're basically virtually guaranteed a near perfect score. Again, assuming an actual effort when you challenged yourself to try to achieve this goal. Okay, that's really great. Don't underestimate the power of that. Then you can more eat, spend more time focusing on getting your English score up, which is a lot harder to improve. By the way, that's one you really want to preempt. If you read a lot in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, do debate club, and you're reading a lot of those like books, whole books at that time, and essays of that nature, uh, English gets a lot easier for you when you're in high school, and you have a much higher chance of getting closer to this. But if you wait till freshman year to start reading he heavy, it's honestly a little bit too late. So don't forget to read some things too. Um, try reading some of the classics, even if your school is not assigning those. Um, your PSAT, again, all of these students are National Merit Scholarship qualifiers, um, essentially. Maybe there's one or two outliers again, but it's also a virtual guarantee. Um, your Amy Qual, what I said here, it's not required for you to receive all of these benefits. And I'm really encouraging you based on this, based on the email um, from that student that I was just really, really appreciative of receiving. What a great uh, thing, and the kid deserves it. He really worked hard and diligent. As you can see, even though it's easier to do your homework, it's not an automatic A. You're still gonna put forth the effort. You still have to do it and be disciplined and stick to your goals and make sacrifices in order to get to where you wanna go. But what? Honestly, an amazing success story once again. I'm going to close this out with a quote that I posted in my Discord server recently. Just something more to consider uh, as we wrap up this video and this competition cycle. It says, if you're worried about the cost of going for it, you should see the price of staying exactly where you are. And I think that's a great quote. It really is true. Are you going to reach, reach Amy if you start? We can't guarantee that. I, even as a teacher, I don't guarantee that to my students. I guarantee to give it my best effort and help you give your best effort as well. Um, if you're looking for classes, I do have some. I'll have my new schedule out here soon. I usually announce it. And the classes generally start around December. I do have an intensive geometry class scheduled to start this Sunday, uh, a few days from now. And uh, if you're interested in those, you can reach out to me on my website. But I really hope you enjoyed this. And for those of you that didn't make Amy this year, um, I really hope you also benefit from this video and realize it's not a lost cause just because you don't get the piece of paper that says you made the award. So I hope this gives you a little bit of encouragement. Thank you for watching this channel. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing this channel with your math clubs and other people. It does mean a lot. And, and I really appreciate that. And I'd like other people to see it. I really hope this content helps people achieve their goals. With that being said, I'm gonna stop recording and I'll catch you in the AMC 10 and 12B solution videos soon.